Hi, I'm Jeremy Simon with 3D Universe. Today I'm here to talk to you about Ultimaker Cura version 5.0. This exciting release introduces an entirely new slicing engine and offers major improvements for existing 3D printer owners. You know, one of the things that's always excited me about 3D printing is the fact that you can invest in a 3D printer and then it continues to get better over time as new materials are released and software continues to get better. Now, Ultimaker Cura has always been a big part of that because the Ultimaker team has done a great job of doing regular updates and continuing to introduce great new features. But with version 5, they have completely redeveloped the slicing engine in a way that offers immense benefits for existing 3D printer users. We're going to take a look at those specific changes in this video, and we'll show you some comparisons of the old slicing engine versus the new one. Now, Ultimaker just released the 5.0 beta today as of the time of this video. By the time you watch this, it may or may not have a stable release available. Either way, I recommend that you check it out because you can run it side by side with other older versions of Cura. If you want to try slicing your objects with the version 4.13, for example, and then run it through the new 5.0, you'll see exactly the improvements that I'm going to show you in this video. And I suspect you'll switch over pretty quickly to using the new version. Okay, so for this video, we are going to be comparing Cura version 4.13.1 with the 5.0 beta. So here we're seeing 4.13.1. We're looking at a 3D Benchy, a model that most 3D printing users are familiar with. And what you see here is just different sizes. This one is 100% scale. And then over here we have one scaled down to 20%, 15%, and then 10%. And if I go ahead and slice this using the version 4.13 Cura engine, and then we go to preview, if we zoom in here, as you'd expect, no problems at all on the 100% scale. If we zoom into these smaller ones, you'll see that at the 20% scale, it's able to print the entire object. But at 15% scale, it starts to drop features. It cannot print that chimney because of the thickness of the walls when it's at that scale. And when you drop down to 10%, it starts to drop a lot more features. Now let's compare that to the exact same setup with the new 5.0 beta engine. We'll go ahead and slice this using the exact same settings. And by the way, we are using a 0.25 millimeter nozzle for this example. So this is the uh, smallest nozzle that Ultimaker offers in order to print finer, smaller details like this. And if we go to preview, now if we zoom in, you'll see that even the 15% and even the 10% scale will print without any problems. And the reason for that has to do with the new slicing engine and the way Cura is able to now modify the thickness of individual extrusion lines, either making them thinner or thicker as needed. And this is a great way of achieving finer details as well as producing higher quality and stronger parts as we're going to see in additional examples here. Okay, so here's another example of a case that was designed to highlight some of the differences in the slicing engine. So I'm going to go ahead and slice this using the Cura version 4.13 engine, and you'll notice that I've switched back to a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. We're using Ultimaker Tough PLA, pretty standard settings here, 0.15 millimeter layers, 20% infill, no supports. Go ahead and slice that. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice is that we have a print time estimate of 4 hours and 20 minutes. And uh, if we go into preview mode, we're going to see if we zoom in that uh, things are not exactly optimal in the way that it's printing these walls and the inner walls that you see here. You'll notice that the coloring, uh, which is, I have it set to uh, color scheme by line type, which means that the red lines are showing the outer walls or shells. The green lines are the inner walls, and the yellow parts in here are showing the infill. You'll notice in these walls on the outside that what it's doing is an outer shell, then inner walls, and then it's putting a thin layer of, of infill on the inside. And it's doing the same thing in the grid that's on the inside of this object here. You'll see that it's the red is doing the outer shells, and then it's trying to squeeze in a line of, of infill in there gets the job done, but not the most efficient way of printing this object. And as you can see, it results in a print time estimate of 4 hours and 20 minutes. 
Now, if we go over here to the 5.0 beta and we slice using the exact same settings, 0.4 nozzle, 0.15 millimeter layers, 20% infill, let's go ahead and slice here. Now we have a print time of 3 hours and 52 minutes, so not too bad. And the reason for that, if we go to preview mode and zoom in, this will become apparent. If we scroll down through the layers, you'll see that now that ye the yellow line of infill is no longer in the middle here, because what it's doing is it's doing the outer shell, the red, and then for the inside, it's just doing a single thick extrusion. That's the green there, and it's filling up that whole inside by increasing the flow rate. And then in this middle grid pattern, it's doing something similar. It's increasing the flow rate a bit on the outer shells so that it does not have to leave a gap in the middle. It does not have to fill in. And that means it doesn't have that additional pass of laying down that infill. That's why we're seeing the print time reduction. So this manner of controlling the flow rate to make thinner or thicker lines of extrusion as the printing is being done is really a very significant improvement for the slicing engine. It leads to better looking parts, stronger parts, and reduced print time. So here's another example just to show the print time improvements with the new Cura 5.0 beta. Here we have an object being sliced with pretty default settings in Cura version 4.13. We're using 0.15 layers, 20% infill. We'll go ahead and slice here. And we get a print time estimate of 4 hours and 52 minutes. Let's slide over to Cura 5.0 beta. We'll slice with the exact same settings and see what we end up with. And now we have a time estimate of 4 hours, 3 minutes. That's a pretty significant savings for a print of this size. You can imagine that on a much longer print, like one that's going to run several days, the time savings will be even more significant with this new engine. So this is pretty exciting. Another thing that Ultimaker highlighted when they released the beta of Cura 5.0 is the recently added infill pattern called Lightning Infill. Now this was added before version 5, but a lot of people might not be aware of it, so I'll introduce that here as well. Under the Infill Pattern option, when you're in the Advanced Settings area of Cura, you have a lot of different options there, and one of those now is Lightning. So this is a helpful new infill pattern for conserving material and reducing print time when you're printing items that don't need to have the maximum level of strength or structural rigidity. So just to show that, we'll go ahead and slice this job here using a more standard triangles infill pattern first and see what that gives us. Okay, now I scaled this up to a pretty large size and we're looking at a print time of one day, 10 hours, 16 minutes. Now let's go to preview mode. And if we look at the layers by scrolling down, you'll see a pretty typical pattern of triangles that stays consistent throughout the entire object. That's a lot of infill for an object like this that's likely just going to sit on a shelf somewhere looking pretty. So let's try changing that to lightning. And let's slice again. And as you can see, that drastically reduced the printing time, bringing it down to 14 hours, 36 minutes. Now let's go ahead and scroll through the layers and see why that is. See, the lightning infill pattern is designed to figure out where supports really are needed internally. And in this case, you see that we have this flat surface over here, and that is parallel to the build plate, therefore certainly needs supports in that area while it's printing. And so these lightning supports, as you can see, sort of build up with the density increasing as it gets closer to that surface, and it builds up a support framework for that. But pretty much every other part of this print is able to be printed without supports. And so it's just printing the shell. The roof already has the mm -hmm. slant that can be printed without supports. And therefore, you are able to print this object with a drastically reduced print time because it's only putting those supports where they are actually needed. As I said, this would not be the best choice for something where structural rigidity or overall strength is important, but you do have other things to control with that as well, like wall thickness and top-bottom layers, things along those lines. So, pretty nice new uh, option for infill when you want to optimize for speed and don't care as much about strength. Another improvement with Cura 5.0 is a redesigned marketplace where you can find plugins and material profiles for Cura. 
Now you'll see that the plugin section is a little bit sparse right now, and that is because the plugins need to be updated by the plugin developers in order to be compatible with version 5. So you'll see this fill up as we approach the final release date and going forward from there. In the materials section, you can find a huge range of materials from third-party manufacturers that have been uh, developed to work very well with Cure, with profiles that are ready to use. And I want to call attention specifically to a couple of Bass F materials. They offer metal materials for 3D printing real metal parts. Uh, so things like the Ultrafuse 316L and Ultrafuse 17-4PH. These materials can be printed and then sent to a third party for a debinding and sintering, and what you get back are actual metal parts. Now there are some additional challenges to working with these types of metal materials because of the debinding and sintering process that the parts need to go through. In that process, you'll end up with some shrinkage and possible deformation of your parts, and previously that needed to be countered with a lot of trial and error. But Ultimakers made some big improvements with the new engine and printing profiles for these materials to minimize those effects and make it easier to print with these materials. So it's a better time than ever to try out printing metal with your 3D printer. I was also excited to see that Ultimaker added in Apple Silicon support for the M1 processors with this version of Cura. I will say that as of now, with the early beta of the 5.0, I am still seeing it showing up as an Intel-based application, but I assume that is something that will be addressed by the final release, since it does say that M1 support is included in the release notes. So I'm definitely looking forward to the performance gains that that will bring with it. I hope you found this video useful. Go ahead and download a copy of Cura 5 if you haven't already and try it out for yourself. Let us know if you have any questions. As always, you can reach out to us at info at 3duniverse.org with any questions. Be sure to like, subscribe, and click the bell to get notifications for future videos. Thanks for watching.